I'm Stephen Bauman and welcome again to The Bauman Effect. Today in this little short video, I'm going to discuss an insight that you probably never really considered about your studio and the kind of light that you have in your studio. Although it's brief, it may give you an idea of what might be going wrong with your paintings as you take them from your studio or from outdoors and bring them indoors and try to display them in your hallways and in your darker rooms. So sit back and relax and enjoy this insight and I will see you on the other right. side. Today I'm gonna to cover a little bit about setting up your studio because a lot of people gotta get confused. On my Patreon site, they're asking me a lot of questions about what kind of light that they should paint on. And when we're setting up a studio, we kind of have an idea that we have to have light. And when we hear about people and their lighting, they always talk about, oh, the north light or the light coming into my studio or, oh, my studio is perfect because I have so much light. But the reality is, is too much light is bad. Too much light is not good in a studio. Now, some of you are probably wondering why it is that when you paint in a studio, you're, you paint and it looks so beautiful, or if you're outdoors and you're painting, it looks so real. And then you bring it into your living room, and all of a sudden the painting looks so dark. It's like, where did it go? Well, when you have that much light infused in the studio, when you have that much light infused onto your painting, what happens is the light overly saturates the picture, and you have a tendency to want to darken the colors down because of the brightness of all the colors that you're seeing. And the problem with that is that when we go back into our studio, or if we put that painting that we just painted in a really brightly lit studio, and we put it into uh, our, uh, our hallways, or our living rooms, or our bathrooms, depending on what kind of painting you think you've done. The bathrooms are not a bad place to have paintings because you definitely have you know, the attention of your, your, your viewer. But nonetheless, um, so, so uh, but bringing the paintings in and, uh, and, and seeing the change is indication that your studio is too light. When you have, most houses that are built are usually built with southern exposure because most people want light to come into their room. That is absolutely bad. It's a bad idea. In my studio, I live in Mount Shasta. I have a beautiful view of Mount Shasta. And I, I sit there and I wish I could paint it all day long looking at that view. But the reality is, is that I face east and the sun comes up. And all day that room is like a fishbowl. And until sunset, I get light from all different directions. Not only is the direction of my light constantly changing um, and reflecting. And, and, you know, I get also snow. And so the light even kind of comes down and reflects on the snow and reflects back in the window. So I'm getting up light, which is not a good idea either. If you're, if you're somewhere where you've got a patio or, or a porch, you've got to make sure that you're, you, you don't get that reflective light up because you always want to make sure that your light is always the same way as it would be in a room or in a gallery, the light going down. But a painting that's painted in a studio that has eastern or southern or western light will appear funky when you stick that painting into other kinds of light. Usually the, the room is too lit, uh, light bounces off the walls. So ideally you want a north light. Now when I was living in San Francisco, I had a north light studio and I didn't really realize how wonderful it was because I had one of these old houses that had long eaves and barely any light came into the room. And the paintings that I did for those 15 years were amazing. And I couldn't, yeah, and I was cursing all the time. Oh, darn these, these windows because of the eaves. I can't get really good lighting in the room. And oftentimes I had to use artificial light during the, during the day. And consequently, the paintings were superb and I could put them in different kinds of galleries and different places and in some people's bathrooms. And they looked fabulous there. You want to paint under minimal light, believe it or not. Less is better. You want to paint under lights that are just like, you know, right now I paint at night because of the problem that I have. I'm currently moving to a different studio. But you want to work, I work under a 60 watt full spectrum bulb. Almost, I mean, you barely can read under it. And I have that on a little, little, a tripod and I move it around and I paint under that little spot and it's absolutely perfect. 
When we think about the old masters, we think about their lives and go, oh wow, that must have been so wonderful. But the reality is, is that a lot of those guys were married, they had kids, they had farm equipment, they had to feed the horses and stuff because if they didn't take care of the horses, they couldn't go buy painting supplies. So they, they had that during the day. The wives or even themselves had to go down to the river and, and clean their clothing. And so during the day, that's when you did those things. So when you really think about the old masters, most of them painted at night by candlelight. And we think about the old masters up in, in Holland, those houses, because of how cold they are, have little windows. And a lot of the, the, the rooms that did have north light in them have very small windows and not a light coming in. So the old masters, this whole idea of painting with a lot of light is more of an, a modern thing. And shame on us because light is so convenient for us now. Why aren't we spending our time painting more? But the problem that we have is that we have to paint in the right environment. So if you're going to start setting up your studio, number one, cover your windows. As magnificent as whatever view you have, you need to cover them. And then you need to paint the walls dark and paint them very um, subdued. Uh, with a group of artists, I went to Tetons to go teach like we did every year for years. And there was a sign that said open studio. So we drove up in there and it was a studio for Comrade Schwering who had just passed away and they were doing his estate. And we had the fortunate opportunity to go through it. It wasn't really open to the public. The sign was mainly for IRS people and stuff to come up and do the estate. Uh, we drove up in there and we got out and he had a magnificent view of the Tetons. Just, he had been there forever. He was one of the main artists that started all of the, the art in Jackson Hole. And when he retired there, he retired very well. He had a gorgeous house looking out over the Tetons. Beautiful. He had an outdoor studio. So we're wandering around looking at all of his work. And I said, could I see his studio, please? And she says, you want to see his studio? And I go, yeah, yeah, let's go. So she takes us out through the kitchen, down across the driveway. And there's this big, huge metal building, you know, the kind that you can buy, you know, just for a garage. And didn't even have a garage door on it. It just had a single door on it, no windows. She opened it up and she said, here's the studio, flip the light. And at the end of this huge, long, black interior painted garage was this easel with a little table next to it and a little armoire where he kept all of his paints. And in that environment, he painted the most scrumptious, colorful, wonderful paintings. I should have known then that the key to having a great studio is to have a dark cave man cave, if you will, or a she shed, where you, you lock all of, the, all of the light from coming within, so. So that was a lot of conversation about setting up a studio, but I think it's really important to really examine the workspace that you're in and realize that if you paint something that is overly bright in the studio, that when you take that painting and put it into a hallway or into a room that doesn't have that much light, it would actually appear much darker than you would want it to be. If you'd like to get more information about this and other topics, please go to my website at www.stephanbauman.com and there you can register for a free book, Everything I Know About Painting. And you can also get information about my Patreon site, my YouTube videos, and everything else you possibly could need to get started as an artist. If you'd like to get more information about coaching, please give me a call at 415-606-9074. So until the next time we meet, be sure not to go into the studio unless you plan to change the world. And always remember to paint with passion. I'm Stefan Bauman. Thanks for watching.